habits either make us or break us. And I want to let us know that it is possible with God to start good habits and break up with old habits. How many of us need to break up? Like we need a big breakup with some bad habits. Um, a lot of, I think because of um, maybe the, I know someone said, I've been getting lazy, right? Or I've been getting, Barbara said, I've been getting upset. Um, yeah, these are normal to feel in a season like this. You are completely normal. I've, I've had moments of being upset of why God, of what is happening. Um, those are normal. And so when we start letting our feelings dominate us, we, out, we pick up these bad habits. Maybe they're not good feelings of um, maybe being upset, of anger, of frustration, of uh, having anxiety. Out of those feelings of our, in the core of what we're feeling will come usually a physical response of either some people, you know, with maybe a addic addiction to food of I, I numb my pain with, fe with feeding myself or I numb my pain with online shopping or I numb my pain, you know, with drugs or alcohol or maybe some can say, man, I picked up alcohol I'm never used to, but I have. Um, maybe that is you tonight and, and, and I want to let you know that every habit, it's going to take work. But you cannot do it on your own. To break bad habits, to break up with those bad habits, we need Jesus. We absolutely need Jesus. But we need to be honest and real about these habits that we have maybe picked up. We absolutely need to be transparent and honest with ourselves. Like, man, you know what? Yeah, I've been waking up late. Or, man, I've, I've been sleeping in because... You know, even part of sleeping in more than those can lead to even mental health, uh, your state and your mental health state. You know, some people who sleep longer and maybe you're like, man, I, I don't want to admit it, but maybe, maybe I'm, I, I, maybe I'm a little bit depressed. You know, so we have to look at the, the sleeping patterns. We have to look at, at the mood that we're in. And, and I want to let you know tonight, if that's you and you're like, man, I'm sleeping more than usual because I just... You know, it's hard for me to wake up. I, I just want to say it's okay to reach out for help. Um, everybody has seasons. Every, uh, a lot of, everybody goes through seasons of even depression. Um, and when it comes to mental health, what are some habits that we can pick up to just get, get out, you know, get out of, of, of I'm not going to go there. This is a familiar territory, but I'm going to say no and I'm going to move forward, right? Um, it's okay to seek help. If you maybe are in a state of depression, please seek help. You are not weak by doing that. You are strong. You are, um, you're fighting, right? You're a contender for your uh, emotional health. Because uh, the reality is, is when we operate in our false self, um, I, you know, we, our false self being sometimes anything that takes the place of God or tries to replace God that's operating in our false self. And our true self is, is being sons and daughters of God. That is our true self, that we're the righteousness of Christ. But when we, when we act in our false self, it hurts community, it hurts those around us, it hurts our families. When we operate in our false self, maybe picking up bad habits, it can also hurt those around us as well. And so if you're in that state, let our prayer tonight be, God, please, 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 we need your help breaking these bad habits, breaking up with these bad habits, and God help us to create good habits. It takes 21 days to make a habit. You know, we have been in a season of fasting and praying for 40 days. Don't think that we forgot. We are still fasting and praying 40 days, and we can definitely pick up some good habits we can pick up spiritual disciplines, right, in this fast that we have been in where it can become more of a routine. But um, do you remember um, the last time, you know, do you remember when you tried starting a new habit? Um, you know, the fear of starting a new habit, the, oh, I don't know if it's going to happen, or I don't know if I can do this, or I'm stoked for the first week, but then the second week, it's done. Can you remember that feeling, man? Just hold on to that tonight as you have this memory of starting new things or doing new things. Um, we're talking about habits tonight. And so tonight I want to talk about spiritual habits, 
spiritual habits. We can talk about, you know, weight loss, diets, fads, um, exercise, um, waking up early. But I believe that God is wanting, especially as we are fasting, to get into spiritual habits. I'm not here. We're not pointing anybody out. But there is something in this season that we have um, lessened our passion for spiritual discipline. Because we are allowing the, the wave of emotions and the wave of the situations that are hitting us, we're allowing that to control us. So we have been breaking up with good habits that we need to get back to, we need to return back to. So I want to, I hope that tonight will spark, maybe you've lost spiritual discipline, spirit, good spiritual habits. And I pray that tonight that you will be reignited. Thank you, Idris. For your transparency i'm not gonna lie this 40 days hasn't been easy it is hard it was never gonna be easy right even jesus fasted for 40 days and he was man even him jesus was tired he was hungry he was you know he went he was fully god fully human and and it's not easy some 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 people maybe um, have, 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 have forgotten about the fast. You know, Pastor Lillian is on, but I kind of laugh because me and Pastor Lillian were having this conversation of, man, we need to just kick it in gear to the next level when it comes to fasting and praying because so often we can forget, oh yeah, we're fasting and praying, hello, right? As we get into life and the mundane and the crazy busyness. But can I encourage you tonight that if you slipped up, come back up, come back up. Pray as if it depended on you. Fast as if it has depended on you. It's okay. You're not a failure. Don't let shame and guilt hold you down on this fast. Come back up. Actually, add even more. I don't know. Maybe you're like, oh man, just maybe one meal once a week. Add two meals. Let's do this together. This is your encouragement call. I know it's hard. I know. I know, Nadine. I have slipped too. It has not been easy. It has not been perfect but we're going to get back up and we're going to say god you're moving and we want to see you move in deeper ways and so let's encourage each other pastor lily and i see that you are on encourage us right we were just having this conversation that 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 we can't grow weary right when we're about to see the breakthrough right when we're really at the edge of like oh, it's almost there do not give up Sometimes we give up way before, right? The miracle happens. Let's not, let's not give up. And so um, I want to talk about um, spiritual habits, spiritual discipline tonight. And I hope this encourages you. But spirit, spirituality, what is, what is spirituality to you? Write it in the chat. What is spirituality to you? Spirituality, what is? is spirituality as Christians, what does that mean to you? What is spirituality? I really do believe um, spirituality as Christians uh, is our human experience of being in a gifted relationship with Jesus. This is spirituality. Spirituality is the value of religious experience as a way to in uh to intimate knowledge of god it is the graced life of christian pilgrimage it is, spirituality is also the need for inner guidance by the spirit of jesus um, rhoda says faith and hope with jesus ashley says being led by the spirit in everything amen to that in tune with god Lillian, what is spirituality? Great question. Spirituality is the awareness, right? The human experience of being in, in a relationship with Jesus. It's, it's, it, it's, it's the need for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You guys are all nailing it. Spirituality is loving one another. Yes, spirituality. How can we get in tune? How can we create habits to grow spiritually, right? Discipleship, being a disciple of God, of Jesus, of God, it is not easy. It takes work. Discipleship takes work. It is hard. It's never going to be easy. But I believe that discipleship and discipline go hand in hand. Can you really be a disciple of Jesus without living a disciplined life? 
I think it would be very, very difficult to do that. But a disciplined life is truly living as a disciple of Jesus. So when we say, yes, Jesus, we're going to follow you, we are being disciples of becoming more like you, of walking this pilgrimage, right? We're going to die. Yes, Idris, we're going to die to ourselves. We're going to pick up our cross and we're going to follow you. And picking up our cross means that it's heavy, that we're going to completely abandon everything for the cause of becoming more like Jesus. How willing are we to abandon everything? This is true spirituality, being guided by Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, becoming more like him, living a disciplined life, disciplined life, right? And so I really do believe we should be developing and we should be fighting for spiritual growth every day to be connected with Jesus to know him more, to experience his freedom, his peace, his guidance, and to start looking more like him. We have to fight for this spiritual growth, spiritual discipline. The, the reality is, is sometimes we just can care less because life happens, right? We're not really looking at the spiritual aspect. We're not really looking into the spiritual realm. But we have to fight for this, right? This is what faith, Rhoda says, it's, it's hope, it's faith. Faith, believing in something that you can't see, right? We have to fight for spiritual growth. And we have our seasons of, oh, I only want God when th things are really bad. No, you. we love God. We fight for our spiritual growth. We fight for our relationship with him every day in good and in bad. This, these are the habits we need to pick up when it comes to spirituality. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna go after God. I'm running. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna run towards God and becoming more like him. So have you created good habits in this season that are drawing you closer to God? Or further away from him. You see, I believe we will encounter God in powerful ways and grow in him more than ever before in this season. That's what I'm believing in. And tonight I want us to look at the story of Zacchaeus. And I believe this story is going to show us why we need spiritual growth. But also, uh, this story reveals the habits and steps for spiritual growth and ultimately a healthy soul by having an encounter with God and being made one with him. So let's read this together, starting at Luke chapter 19. Let me know if you're there. Let's read this together. Again, that is Luke 19. We're going to start at verse 1. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you're there. Let's read this. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a, a man named, uh, there was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor Lord. And if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who 
are lost. I want to walk us through this amazing story of grace, of encounter. I'm, I, and I, I want you guys to take notes of what stood out to you tonight. I want to share with you a couple observations that will launch us into spiritual growth. And I want us to recognize the first thing we see in the first verse, right, that we read is that Jesus is the divine initiator, okay? This is the first opening verse of the story of Zacchaeus. Jesus is the divine initiator and he showed up making his way through town. We read that in verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through town. Can you can you can you just can you just put yourself in this imagery right now in this scene? Can you can you picture Jesus coming to your town, coming to your home? Can you just Put yourself in this scene as we are reading. If you are writing notes tonight, I want us to write this down. Even though you may not know it, Jesus is initiating a relationship with you. You see, if we are going to grow spiritually and we are going to make these, these good spiritual habits um, of connection with God, this is the first thing we must know. We must always know that God is always initiating relationship with you and with me. How are we going to create a habit? By knowing that God is initiating. He is making the first move. That God is coming to you. He's coming to your house. He's coming to your home. I'm telling you, man. I sometimes miss God initiating in my life. He's like, Kayla, I've been making this move. I've been making the moves. You just haven't realized. God is always, always relentless after us in pursuit. He's making the first move. You see, we read in the first chapters that Jesus yearns to be with Zacchaeus. Jesus moves, he moves towards Jericho. Something is stirring inside Jesus. Something is building up inside of him in order to initiate and to move towards. I want to let you know tonight, he's moving towards me, he's moving towards you. This is the first foundational thing that we must know in our spirituality, in this relationship, in this pilgrimage, in this process, in this walk with Jesus. He is moving towards you. He's not moving away from you. He's moving towards you. He is for you. And it doesn't matter who you are. It, um, Jesus wants you and I. He doesn't care if you're the tax collector. He doesn't care. He's moving towards every single person, all of his sons and daughters, even those who don't even see it, those who don't even know him. He's making moves towards you, to your house. It doesn't matter, again, if you're a tax collector, if you're a thief, if you're a robber, if you're a liar, whatever. It does not matter because all, he, all, all we have to know is that he's making the move towards us and he wants a relationship with us. See, when I know that, that causes me to want to move towards him. Oh, I'm pursued? You're moving towards, you want to come to my house? Oh my goodness. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up these spiritual habits real quick. <laughs> the second thing I want us to observe is that we, we need to want to see who Jesus is. If you're writing notes, second point. We need to want to see who Jesus is. In this season, have you been wanting, to, have you had, in this season of fog, of crazy things, have you 
Have you had a curiosity? You know, some of us are like, oh, I know God. I know who he is. He's awesome. He's for me. He's moving towards me. But have you had this wonder and curiosity and this desire to search? Have you had this curiosity to, to see who Jesus is? You, we read in verse 3 that Zacchaeus tried to get a look at Jesus. But he was too short. I know, short people problems. He was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road. There was something stirring inside of Zacchaeus that caused him to search and be curious, even if he didn't even know who Jesus was. Zacchaeus had this sense of smallness. Um, a sense of something lacking in his life. The question I have for you tonight, church, is do you want to see who Jesus is and do anything to see him? Will you look silly? Will you do anything to lock eyes, to see who, who Jesus is? Who is this Jesus that everyone is talking about? Who is this Jesus? Is there, this, is there a curiosity, a wanting, a wondering? Who is Jesus? And you may think, again, I'm speaking to those, maybe in the religious false self, I'm speaking to those who we may think we know. We may think that we know, but we don't know. Jesus is wanting to be discovered in a new way every single day. And we think because we've been taught these things every single day, oh, we know him. I, I don't really care if he's a, he's my, uh, I don't know, if he comes to my, no, no, no. I want to know, I have this curiosity to want to know more about Jesus and I will do whatever it takes. And yes, Pastor Lillian, I will look silly doing it. Talk about children's pastors looking silly going after Jesus. Those are our children's pastors. <laughs> I will do whatever it takes. I want to hop on that tree and I have to see Jesus. I have to. I have to see him. Even though I'm busy, even though maybe, maybe, maybe Zacchaeus had his own agenda. I don't know what it was, but I have to see Jesus. Is that our heart tonight, church? I'm going to do whatever it takes to just get a glimpse of this guy that people are talking about. Because maybe he is what everybody is saying that he is. And I want to find out for myself. The third thing I want us to realize is that we must realize that Jesus is setting up the encounter. We see this in verse 5. Jesus seeking Zacchaeus out causes, it causes like this crisis moment in Zacchaeus. It's, um, let's just read verse five, uh, verse five. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Dude, if Jesus told me that, I would be freaking out. Like, oh my gosh, is my house clean? Does my family know? Me? Oh my gosh, you're calling my name? You want to be a guest at my house? Ah! There's this crisis moment. And there's this urgency that Jesus is saying, look, at, there's no time to delay. Could this be a word for us tonight, church, that Jesus is coming to our homes, serving us up. He's saying, yes, you, there's no time to delay. Quickly, Jesus says, quickly, Zacchaeus, get down. Come down quick, I must be a guest at your house. There's this urgency of today. Or not, oh no, I, I want to go to your house later on and then not come through. No, 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 there's this urgency saying, Zacchaeus, hurry. Come down immediately without a moment to spare. Zacchaeus came down at once and made friends with him, made friends with Jesus. You see, this is also an important moment for Jesus. Because Jesus says, today I must go to your house. For Jesus, it was no other house. For Jesus, it was no other companion will satisfy. Zacchaeus, I want to go to your house. Now, they are both moving toward an interpersonal encounter. 
Yes, Jesus is making the first, uh, Jesus made the first move. He, he's, he's, he's initiating this relationship. He's initiating it. But there, there is, the, they're both, Zacchaeus and Jesus, both moving toward an interpersonal encounter. Will you take that step, right? This of uh, uh, spirituality, of becoming more like Christ, of being guided. Will you take this step into encounter? I want us to feel the urgency tonight of how Jesus wants to be with us, to know us, and for us to know him. Don't delay. Quickly get down. I want to go to your house. There's no time to waste, church. We can't wait for this pandemic to be over. We can't wait. There's an urgency of, uh, of encounter. There's an urgency of, uh, uh, of salvation. There's an urgency of, 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 of I want to go. I want to go to your house. It just says I can imagine the look on his face like he knows my name. It just says that it feels good when somebody says your name for the first time. You're absolutely right, it just because it's relational. It's personal. It's a I am known. I am seen and I am known. There's something when someone calls your name, not hi brother and sister in Christ, but when I say hey Idris, right? Hey Beth. I want to go to your house tonight. There's a connection, there's this intimacy. This is Jesus to us tonight, calling your name. Calling your name tonight. I want to hang out with you. I desire you. There's an urgency. I have to be with you. I want to be with you. Let's hang out. Did, did Zacchaeus say, no, man, peace out. My wife ain't going to allow it because the house isn't clean. No. Zacchaeus, that was not his answer. <laughs> Let me check in with the wife first. No. It was like, oh my goodness, Jesus is coming to my house. <laughs> There's no time to waste, church. Jesus has been setting you up. He's been setting me up for encounter. This is the reality. The next thing I want us to observe is that we must get past the distractions and the obstacles and position ourselves for transformation. You see Z Zacchaeus, we see in verse six, that Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and in joy. But check this out, Zacchaeus has some haters, okay? How many of us got haters? Haters gonna hate. It says in verse seven, but the people were displeased. He has gone to be with the uh, be, be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. <laughs> you see, in order to take Jesus into his house, Zacchaeus must move through a crowd of resistors, of haters. He has to move through both internally and externally. The distractions and obstacles in your life could be like Zacchaeus' people displeased with you, right? They hated, displeased with Zacchaeus. You know, there, there, there are no, there are considerations. You know, regarding profession. You know, Zacchaeus is a tax collector. Um, his social image. He's a very rich and powerful man. Personal cost. Can I get through this by giving half of my wealth, or will it require all? Family, what will my wife and kids say when I bring Jesus into the house? You know, I'm sure as these things were going through Zacchaeus' mind, right, as he is um, coming to Jesus, right, and get, got down from the tree, these obstacles will flood, right? I can't possibly meet with Jesus because I have, I have a busy schedule. I can't possibly meet with Jesus because I'm dirty, and I'm, I'm not clean and I'm shameful. I can't possibly meet with Jesus because my friends will think I'm weird. I can't possibly meet with Jesus because make up any distraction and obstacle in your mind. 
But if you're going to position yourself for real transformation, for a miracle, for an encounter with God, you have to get past the distractions and the obstacles. You have to resist the resistors. You have to go through and, and, and move forward into this encounter, into this relationship with God. Again, it's not easy following Jesus. You know, it's, it's really crazy how we tend to deal with God in the same way that we deal with life emotionally, right? Zakia resists the resistances in the midst of many voices, internal, external. Zakia stood his ground. He stood it, guys. He positioned himself for transformation. His transformation was a shift to his whole worldview, literally. One moment with God, if you hear the response, if when we read the response of Zacchaeus, one encounter with God, he didn't know theology, he didn't know anything, but one encounter with God. Read this, we read this in verse 8. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood up before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor. Now this is the tax collector who robbed everybody pretty much. He met with Jesus for a couple seconds. And he's saying, meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord. And, I, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. You see, an encounter with Jesus changes everything. Have we... Have we, have we realized that Jesus is the initiator? Have we realized that Jesus has been setting us up for encounter? Have we realized this, church? Because when we encounter him, our whole perspective changes. A radical thing happened to Zacchaeus. Now, I, I'm going to give half my wealth to the poor. He didn't even hear Jesus out. Like, just the presence of God changed his mindset. I'm going to give half my wealth out. Everybody who I did wrong, I'm going to give them back four times as much. Oh my goodness. By just one moment with Jesus in his presence, Jesus didn't give him a, 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 he didn't give him a big old speech. It was one moment and his presence caused him to shift his mind, to shift the way that he, that he thought, yes, Idris, he became loving because he had encountered the God of love. The conclusion of this story is very simple. It's the habit for spiritual growth. If we're going to create this habit, good habits for spirituality. We just have to say yes to God. Move past the resistors. Move past the, the distractions, the obstacles, the many voices, the many excuses that you have. We have to move past it and say, God, you are all that I want to see. You are all that I want in life. Do you have that tonight, church? I have this burning desire that there is so much more. There is so much more, church, that we do not understand. I have this hunger inside of me that my prayer and I get emotional because I say, God, what are you doing in this season? I want to know. I have to know. What are you saying? Who do you, how are you going to use me? What do you, I want to do what you do. I want to do what Jesus did, that he only said what Jesus said. He moved where, where God, he, Jesus did what the Father did. And that is my heart. But that takes a discipline of spirituality to get into the habit of saying, I want to look, I want to see. God, what are you doing? Where are you? And when we realize that God has actually been moving towards us the whole time, he comes to our city, he comes to our church, he comes, God is showing up to your house. And we missed it because we're like, oh, it's just God passing by. This should bother you tonight, church, your stance of where you've been. We are more spiritual beings than human beings. We must have this desire to know God more, to know what he's up to, to know what he's doing, and for us to be so preoccupied, preoccupied with our selfishness of, I'm just trying to live. No, the God of peace, the God of transformation is moving towards you. 
He's moving towards me. And he's setting us up. He's setting me up. He's setting our church up. He's setting us up for revival. He's setting us up for encounter. But am I going to climb that tree? Am I going to look? Am I going to actually open my eyes to see Jesus? I'm so moved tonight by the heart of God. That he calls me by name. He calls you by name. And he moves towards you. And he says, I must go to your house. I want to be at your house. No other house. No other place. But I want to go to your house. We must be founded, church, in this season. As we have been fasting and praying, we must be founded upon the rock. I want to end with this scripture found in Matthew chapter 7. If you guys want to turn there with me. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. It says, Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall, because it had been found its foundation, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. I want to ask us tonight, as we are talking about habits, as we are talking about being founded and moving past the obstacles, moving past the distractions, I want to ask us tonight, are we, is our foundation built on sand? Is our, founda or is our foundation built on the rock, on the word of God? Where are you at tonight, church? Ask yourself, man, have I been on seeking sand? Because I haven't been, I haven't been, I hear the words, but I'm not putting them into practice. These are habits, guys, these practices, right? These spiritual disciplines of reading that we just learned on Sunday about the word of God. Pastor John spoke on this. Am I founded on the rock or have I been sinking sand? I, 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 I am so moved tonight of God. I want to be founded in you. I want to be confident that when the storms come, when the wind comes, that I've, have, I've created, right, in these 40 days, this spiritual discipline of knowing what you're up to, of hearing you, of hearing your word, of reading your word, that I am unshakable and I am confident in this. I'm going to close with a personal story that totally wrecked me and that I encountered God in. This morning, I took my son, Zion. He is four years old. I took him to get his uh, shots for pre-k and it, only one parent was allowed and uh, I took him to get his shots and my son Zion is literally fearless like he is not scared of anything <laughs> he is just so brave and so strong and they're getting ready to give him his three shots right and as a mother oh, for the moms on here who hates seeing your kids in pain right there, there I was holding my son's hand as he was getting his three shots. And the nurse says, okay, lay down now. And Zion was confident. He lays down like this. He's literally like this. And he's confident. He's not shaking. He's like, I got this. I'm going to get medicine. I'm going to be fine. Cool. I'm not scared. And he gets his first shot. And I'm looking at his face. And he goes, oh. he kind of cringes the first one. And then the second one comes, and he's like, oh, he kind of makes this, like, noise of moaning. But he was tough as nails, man. And then the third one came, and he's like, ow. He goes, ouch. <laughs> and then he has a, a tear 
running down his face and I lost it right there because there was this moment of man if I want to be like my son being so fearless being so brave a storm came right these shots and pain was coming and he was so strong he was so brave and I cried I'm like man can I have that can I have that ounce of fearlessness that you have I was so moved and the Lord was speaking to me that when we are founded on the rock when the pains come when the storms come I can have that same reaction as Zion just a tear you know sometimes like my other son on the other hand not to rat him out he's like kicking and screaming and we have to hold him down to get his shots he's like yeah! <laughs> right but I was so moved this morning by what God was doing. Childlike faith, Idris, that's right. He says, I'm gonna be okay, I'm founded, I'm fearless, I'm confident, and it's gonna hurt a little, but I'm gonna get through this. My four-year-old son taught me this this morning and the Lord was reminding me. Will you be founded on the word, the word, the word of God? As you pray and fast, pick up the spiritual disciplines, the habits, the good habits, Start developing, start caring enough to know, God, what are you up to? What are you doing and what are you saying today? I must, I must have you at my home because again, he's initiating relationship with us. He's initiating encounter with us. He's setting us up, guys, and he just wants you. He just wants you. And so I wanna end us tonight. I hope that you were blessed and that Holy Spirit spoke to you. And maybe it's a wake-up call to, man, I want to be founded on the rock, not on sinking sand. That every word of God, everything that I'm listening, I'm actually applying it. I'm practicing it. I'm this discipline that I'm doing it. And would you just hear the voice of the Lord tonight as he called your name? Let's pray tonight, church. I love you. Thank you for this, thank you for this community, for these real moments, these encounters that we have with God together. And I hope that you were blessed tonight. Please respond. Let us know how God spoke to you. I want to pray over us tonight. God, thank you so much for the way that you pursue us. God, we recognize that if we are going to be founded on the rock, if we were going to build these spiritual disciplines of, of creating these healthy habits, God, it takes 21 days to have these habits that we need to apply and practice what we are hearing God, we want to be founded, God. We don't want to be found. We don't want our foundation to be sinking sand, God. But we want to be founded on you, our cornerstone, our rock. Celine was saying, our champion, the one who never fails us. And we just want to know what you're up to, God. Show us where you're going, where you're, what you're saying, God. We have to know, God. I have to know. I, I want to climb on that tree and I'll do whatever it takes to see you and to see what you're doing. God, continue to speak to us tonight. Give us dreams. Give us visions as, uh, of you moving towards us, of you calling us by name, God. Thank you so much. Can you just thank him, church, for his goodness? Can you thank him for his nearness? Can you thank him because he is personal and he wants relationship with us individually? He wants an intimate relationship with you and I. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you sense him moving towards you, I want to pray with you. Would you message our church? I would love to call you and pray with you and lead you into a prayer of salvation. But I love you guys and I bless you guys in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Also, remember that your giving still matters in this season. Um, your tithe and offering. Continue to give back to the Lord. Continue to be faithful um, in what he's calling you to do. And so love you guys and bless you. Hope you guys have a great night. We will see you on Sunday for on Church Online as we celebrate Kickoff Sunday. Don't forget to wear your jerseys. Um, and I would love to connect with you throughout the week. Maybe you're in the city. I would love to have coffee with you. Let us know. Let me know. I would love, 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 love to sit down with some of you and chat with you and just catch up. Bless you guys. Have a great night.